Hey fellow tamers and Destined, it's Mike aka Sanaku from Overground and welcome back to the channel. Now normally around this time we'd be putting up our rainbow series of videos that's where we build one deck of every color based off what we pulled out of our initial run of BT4 or I guess new set boxes in this case whatever they may be supplemented by any cards that we currently have in our card pool and this is kind of barring any additional singles purchases or any additional trades that we may do after the fact and uh Although this is primarily an entirely blue deck, it's not technically part of the Rainbow series. Instead, this is a deck I built to showcase the first competitive deck I was able to build for BT4, outside of all my additional main box purchases that we made. Now, about 15 minutes ago, the postman came and delivered six lovely boxes of Great Legend, which we're going to be opening later tonight at the time of this recording. So today would be Tuesday the 15th of June, so we will be putting a recording of opening of these six boxes up on our Twitch later this afternoon. However, uh, before that, I was able to get my hands on three boxes total before opening these six that we ordered for the channel specifically, and one of them which uh, we opened earlier this week, and the other two I kind of got yesterday, but I opened them kind of in a rush because I needed them to participate in a tournament, and as a result, I was able to pull everything I needed to play in said tournament, and uh, this is the result that you see before you. So, uh, again... Earlier, I believe last week, we put up a series called Before the Rainbow, where we discussed some kind of knee-jerk first draft deck lists for uh, things like Shine Greymon, War Greymon, and Blue Imperial Dramon, and I talked about the new hybrid engine and how it kind of takes Imperial Dramon to the next level, and how it's going to adapt and kind of morph into the BT4 format. And what you see before you now is a more uh, finite and... Um, finessed version of that theory complete with new text to help combat some of the main thrusts that you're going to see in the format as well as newer cards that we did not speak about in the original video so i'm not going to do a huge card by card for this video as well because again these are cards that you're going to be likely highly familiar with and instead we're going to talk about some of the ratios that we've changed some of the cards that we've put into the deck that are different from the original draft and some cards that we never mentioned in the first place so let's talk about the babies first. So you're going to notice that we're only playing the four Demi V and we've excluded the fifth egg. We're not playing the extra Upamon or any other blue egg that could be the case. And this is because in this format specifically, as we move into BT4, the name of the game is pretty much just removal, removal, removal. So anything that you put up in your front lines is just asking to be taken care of. And we're going to be playing a lot of kind of hide in the raising area of this format. And because of that, you're hard playing your rookies a lot more, which is why we have a lot of rookies in this deck with on-play effects, and you're generally only digivolving into your raising area into a rookie to build up into a tall stack so that way you can bring it out when it's safe and just start swinging for the fences. With this in mind, you could potentially have a Digimon in raising for two to three, maybe even four turns. And with that in mind, you don't necessarily need the fifth egg because you're never going to reach a point in the game where you're going to need to flip all four over if you're constantly going to be hiding in the raising area. So this deck kind of plays more like a glorified rookie rush because you're constantly putting up small bodies up front to kind of get free advantage. And then you're going to just take little pot shots with them at your opponent while slowly building up to a big Imperial Dramon stack in the back. And in the meantime, you have your hybrid Digimon to kind of finish off your opponent as kind of... Uh, free out of nowhere secret attackers that kind of come out of the shadows and i'll explain what that means as we go through the rest of the deck list so again we're playing four copies of emon and four copies of strabimon strabimon again is the uh, new hybrid engine searcher for uh, both blue and red got one and what it does is that on play you look at the top three cards of your deck you have to add one digimon with hybrid in its form and or one blue tamer so as we'll just kind of skip ahead a little bit here the other hybrids that we play in the deck are four copies of lobomon and we also play two copies of beowulfmon and to complement that we're also playing five blue tamers that we can hit off Strabimon, three Davis, and the two Matt, which we'll go over as we get further down into the deck list. So now we're playing three copies of Gomamon, and that's because, again, I mentioned that removal is kind of the name of the game. So if I can get a stack out with Gomamon and I'm forced to move it out, I have a contingency plan in the sense that my opponent has to spend an extra memory just to destroy whatever I'm putting up there, or if they want to attack over it. Furthermore, if I do end up putting Gomamon into my front line to add, kind of end my turn or something, for example, and then on the next turn I can evolve it into a blocker, that gives me even more security because I can stop one of my opponent's on oncoming attacks and then gain one memory as a result of it. So Gomamon's just kind of an insurance policy here that shows that if my opponent wants to take the additional steps to remove whatever threats I'm putting up, I can just get a little extra extra more compensated for their work and their trouble and could potentially put me ahead depending on where they've put themselves on the memory gauge. 
Gomamon also helps with potential hammer spark shenanigans and security. Uh, if they attack into something or destroy something before they enter uh, into any more attacks on your security, Gomamon could potentially put them to zero if they're at one, or even put them to one if they were at two, and then hammer spark could just end their turn completely. So this is just a way to kind of manipulate your opponent's turn to your advantage based on other forms of RNG that could potentially uh, come up as a result of a just a regular course of a game. But furthermore, Gomamon's primarily in here just to help mitigate any sources of destruction based on whatever stacks that you can build and you can actually end up sticking. So we're also playing three copies of Gabumon. Again, this is just to give us an extra on-play rookie to play from our hand to keep generating us more advantage. Draw power is never going to be a bad thing, and because we're hiding out in our raising area, we're generally never going to be putting Gabumon over our baby in the first place, so we're always going to be putting him out to hard play to just get a free cycle through our deck. Now we're going to move on to the remainder of the hybrid package. Well, not the remainder, but the first part of the hybrid package, and that's four copies of Lobomon. Now, Lobomon is a two-cost champion, and we can evolve him over top of any blue tamer as if it were a level three Digimon. So not only can we use him in our raising or just on any of our rookies to start building up to a big Imperial Digimon swing, we can also kind of keep him in our hand. And what we can do is that if we have all these tamers built up, we can start swinging for game. And if we have one shot left on our opponent, or if we need additional kind of bodies to just kind of deal with our opponent's stuff, we can sneak out a tamer from our tamer area, put it into the battle area, turning it into a Lobomon, and that gives us a free attacker without necessarily having to have any additional Digimon set up that could be susceptible to any form of removal. So your tamers now kind of act as rookies in a roundabout way because they're rookies that exist in a kind of separate special raising area and which is just your, your tamer area i guess so to speak and what happens is that now every time your opponent is trying to do their combat math and trying to figure out how many attackers you actually have or in the case of imperial Digimon, how many swings you get in terms of how much jamming a digimon you can untap they also have to factor in how many tamers do you have in play and how much memory will you have to potentially give you ex just free extra attackers in terms of lobomon or anything like that and lobomon is just super solid super powerful card and i'm super excited to see how much further I can take him into the format. Uh, the Agunimon for Red is also really strong as well, and I think that's going to put Red into a whole new ball game and kind of change how they play as well. And the reason why this engine is really good is because Imperial Dramon sometimes struggled with getting the right pieces at the right time. And sure, you had Davis to kind of dig through your deck and give you more consistency pieces, but with Stribumon specifically, you can find pretty much every level to your chain, which is actually very strong because Stribumon can get you Lobomon specifically in the case of if you ever needed a champion, or Beowulfmon in the case of if you ever needed an ultimate. Your Imperial Dramon is still a bit up in the air in terms of search power, but between Davis and all your draw power, you're generally going to get it no problem. Next, we're going to be moving on to our champion line. We're playing for Gorillamon. This is just for speed. And again, because we're kind of playing hide in the raising area, we can go into a rookie, go into Gorillamon, and if we have an ultimate to follow up, that'll potentially choke our opponent out at one if we are able to start our turn out at three, which is also very, very powerful. And then we're just playing three copies of Grizzlymon. Grizzlymon is primarily here to put on top of the memory gain in Gomamon if we need to to kind of pull that combo off. But it's also here just in case we're in situations where we need to play a blocker to survive the turn, or we are playing against a very aggressive deck, say like the Mirror Match, for example, or something like Rookie Rush. Blockers themselves are not as strong as they used to be as we move into a big DP reduction format, especially with something like War Greymon running around, because War Greymon's effect can actually delete a blocker immediately before you have the chance to even respond with a block in the first place. So I'm limiting the amount of blockers in the deck just by a little bit, because this deck is very, very aggressive, and we can generally deal with our opponent's front row as necessary through our big swings. They're moving on to our ultimate lineup, and this is another area that's kind of changed a little bit. So we have the three, co four copies of Pyeldramon, which is pretty standard in every deck. Usually we would play three to four copies of Dino Beemon to kind of supplement that, because he was another ultimate that allowed our Imperial Dramon to ditch evolve for three. In this case, we're reducing him to two and replacing it with new uh, challengers in the fray, and that's the two copies of Beowulfmon. Now, Beowulfmon is another hybrid Digimon, so we can search it off our Strabimon, but he's actually got a really cool effect. Not only does he have jamming inherently already as well, which is already just super synergistic with the deck, um, his other effect is that if he has a hybrid in his source or a blue tamer in his source he cannot be attacked and this is kind of a big boon for your Imperial Dramon decks because there were some situations where you didn't have the Imperial Dramon in hand, but you need to start putting pressure on your opponent with either a Pyel Dramon or a Dino Beemon. You swing with it, and then your opponent just kind of hits it back on the back crack. In this case with Beowulfmon, you can attack with jamming pretty much every single turn, and if you have a stack with Demi-V underneath him, you just keep drawing free cards, and your opponent cannot deal with them outside of sheer removal. So they would need to put the DP reduction on him, or they would need to have to have a, sh a straight removal card, or they would have to be able to get it off the field in any other capacity, whether it be through like bouncing or returning it to the deck, but they cannot deal with it through straight combat. And that's very powerful because it pretty much forces you into into forces your opponent into a position to find other ways around it and kind of waste additional resources to deal with this body, because otherwise you're just going to keep getting free attacks every single turn, because it's, it's just going to stick, which is really, really, really strong. 
Then we got the four copies in Reveal Drawn. Now, there is one unfortunate flaw in terms of the uh, Beowulf Mon, and that is because his name is not Pale Dramon or Dino Beamon. If you were to evolve Imperial Dramon over top of him, you would have to pay the hard five. However, you generally don't want to do that. You're generally going to keep Beowulf just as a separate stack and a separate extra attacker. And if you do end up building up to a secondary ultimate stack, when you do attack with Beowulf, he'll just untap when you play the Imperial Dramon over top of your other ultimate stack to get another free swing. Now, in addition to the Tamer lineup, uh, we're playing three copies of Davis and two copies of the starter deck, Matt. And Matt is actually a really cool addition to this deck because he acts as a two-cost rookie at worst, and at best, he's allows, he allows us to uh, manipulate our memory depending on how our opponent plays the game. And it kind of forces your opponent to play a little bit more awkwardly because they're not going to want to hard cast Digimon from their hand or put Digimon out that wouldn't have a source. And we're going into a very heavy Digiburst meta as well, and because of Digiburst removing sources from the Digimon that are activating their Effect, sometimes that can actually remove, um, that can make that Digimon have zero sources, which will actually make Matt live. And depending on how many mats we have in play, we could start our turn with potential of up to five, which then adds synergy to our Beowulf Mon as well, because now we can potentially evolve it into Imperial Dramon to get one final swing on our opponent, or at least one extra swing on our, our opponent if the situation arises. But Matt is really, really cool because it's a cheap tamer that we can play, that we can search off of our Strabimon engine as well, that we can evolve up into a Lobomon without having to turn off our Davis. And this was the main issue that came up in testing originally with the first draft, was that if I only had one Davis in play and I had to turn it into a Lobomon, well now I've lost access to gaining that three memory per turn, and what Matt allows me to do is that if I get Matt early and don't have Davis, I can still accelerate my memory by setting it a little bit higher every turn, and then if I need to evolve over it, I don't lose the capacity that Davis would have given me as well. So you can generally get both of these into play relatively quickly with this entire engine. Not only that, you can get them into play relatively quickly just in terms of how they get hit off of your security. And then the last cards of the deck are pretty self-explanatory. We play for Hammer Spark for memory manipulation, help us continue our turns, go a little bit faster, help us be a good security check to end our opponent's turn, two copies of Breath to help us deal with our forms of removal as well, and then two copies of Omnimon for further removal as well. So yeah, this is the refined competitive version of blue Imperial Dramon, and this is the first competitive deck that I have taken with me into the BT4 format. I look forward to other decks that I can build after I do open my boxes. Unfortunately for the purposes of our Rainbow series, we still have not received our green, black, or purple starter decks, and I would love to have included them into the decks that will be building in the future. I do consider the starter decks as part of like the overall BT4 card pool as a whole. But I look forward to seeing what we can build with what we got after we open these six boxes. And I hope you guys enjoyed this deck list. If you guys have any more questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will be sure to read everything that I can, and I will get back to you guys as soon as I can as well. If you like what we do here at the Overground, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to us as well. Help us reach our next goal of 400. But I have been Mike, aka Sanaku, once again. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you guys in the next one.